going to revise the lesson Senora X No More from the book Study Sing. Senora X No More is a poem. It is a poem. It's not a text. It's not a story. It's a poem. But within the poem, you are going to know a lot about the main character as well. Senora X No More. You can tell that Senora is a word that does not belong to English. Yes, it's a Spanish word. X here refers to uh, something that's not known, that's not identified, exactly like the math. In the math, if you remember in equations, if there is not a number that you don't know, you put X on it or instead of it. So it can tell, it, the title can tell you that uh, we don't know the name of this Senora. And Senora is a Spanish word uh, that's given to a lady. So for example, Senora, Maha, Senora, and then they say the name. Okay, so we can tell from the title that Senora X, X here represents that there is no name. It's an unidentified name or a missing name that we need to know, exactly like the math. You do a whole equation in order to identify the number, right? So no more, we can tell that in the beginning it was something and then by the end we can identify it. So Senora X no more is a title that will show a lot about the poem. So maybe we can tell from the title that the poem is about a senora. A senora X, maybe the name is not identified. Maybe she doesn't know her name. Maybe she doesn't want to tell her name. No more, it tells that there is something that has changed at the end. So senora X no more, as a title, encourages students to explore perceptions like opinions of what it means to belong to a community. This is one of the themes that you need to identify. The idea of belonging, when you belong to a community. So you can tell here that the community is a Spanish community because the word senora is a Spanish word. And what qualities constitute intelligence? So here, it can refer to the idea of intelligence. Okay, uh, what are the qualities of a person? that uh, make this person an intelligent person. So this person, for example, knows how to write, to read and write. This person knows how to speak two languages. This person can do something. So maybe this, these are the qualities that make this person intelligent. And those qualities might differ from one place to another. Pat Mora's poem. So Pat Mora is the name of the poet. Pat Mora is the name of the poet. Who wrote the poem? Pat Mora. Pat Mora's poem asks us to consider why does literacy matter? And literacy means the ability to read and write. Literacy, the ability to read and write. Okay? So the poem is titled Senora X No More. Here, Pat Mora, again, is the name of the, uh, the poet. And the poet is a person who writes poems. Uh, she's an author, a speaker, and an educational cons consultant, and a former teacher. And from all that description, from those words, we can tell that Pat Mora is a highly educated person. Maybe Pat Mora is speaking about someone uh, specific, and we're going to uh, relate that to education. She began writing in the early 1980s and has published numerous poetry collections and children books. She was, so she's very famous of writing poems and children, children books. Much of her book highlights experiences of Mexican Americans. So uh, an experience of a Mexican American person. If you remember before, now we spoke about a new experience and uh, belonging to a community. So now we are introduced to the Mexican-American community. As Mora has long sought to celebrate the power of Mexican-American literature in this poem, Senora X No More, a speaker, so we have the speaker, the person who speaks in the poem, describes learning to write. So the poem is about a person describing the learning, uh, how to write, how to write. In this personal tale, so it's something personal, so we can tell also that the poem is someone who's giving us uh, his or her own experience of earned triumph, like victory. Both the student and her journey uh, are unique. So from this introduction, we know that this poem, from the introduction, we know that the poem 
is about an experience, an experience that happened to a lady that is related to learning how to write. And it's a journey that a lady went through. And we can tell that why the title is Senora X and no more. So there is a journey from the beginning till the end. So we can tell that the journey started with someone who doesn't know how to write. And by the end, this person knows how to write. And since X here, Senora X is referring to the name, maybe the person is going to learn how to write uh, her name. And that's the first step in writing. Take a minute back to KG1. What was the first thing that you learned how to write your name? Okay, let's look at the poem here. The poem starts with straight as a nun I sit. Straight as a nun I sit. Okay, as a nun I sit. Uh, what's a nun? Okay, nun is a religious figure. A nun is a Christian lady. Huh. Bravo. A woman that dedicates her life to, to Christianity and to teaching others and do duties. And nuns are highly educated, highly respected. They uh, sit straight because they're always uh, in a position of being taken as a model or as a role model by others. So she's in the beginning, the speaker is comparing herself to a nun in the way she sits. So we can tell from the way she is comparing herself that she is an educational situation or even a religious situation. So this is a very important situation. This is not about having fun. This is, not, this is something serious. Then she says, my fingers foolish before paper and pen. Now we are introduced to the scene. Fingers foolish before a paper and a pen. So we know that the lady now is sit seated in front of a paper and a pen. So maybe this lady is going to write. The lady is in a classroom. Okay, so now we are trying to analyze the poem. We're digging deeper to understand uh, what the speaker wants to tell us. And the word foolish here, coming after the word fingers, finger foolish. So we can understand here that Foolish is referring to the word fingers, so maybe she doesn't know how to use her fingers to write in front of the paper and the pen, right? So, my fingers foolish before paper and pen. Hide in my palms. So the fingers hide in my palm. So her fingers are not straight. They're not ready to hold the pen. They're as if they're hiding in the palm. I hear the slow accented echo. I hear the slow accented echo. So she hears uh, maybe people uh, talking in an accent. And um, an accent is a special way of uh, speaking. Uh, people have accents because they belong to a special community or they, uh, they, they have uh, specific qualities or this is how the people in this place speak. So it's an accent, like it's... Uh, it's a special way of saying the words, which means that she is in a community that is not 100% related to her community. So she's in another community, a different community, because they speak in an accent. And the word slow here refers to that those people may be learning this uh, accent. Because when you speak slowly, not fluently, maybe you're learning, right? Uh, again, we're trying to analyze the poem. How are you? I am fine. How are you? Of the other women, so we are introduced to the community here, a community of a group of women, women who clutch notebooks and blush at the stiff lips. So clutch notebooks. One more time, those words are referring to a community, an educational uh, class, a school or something, a group of ladies together and blush at their stiff lips. And one more time, stiff lips would show that it's difficult for them to speak. Okay? So stiff like hard lips. It's not easy for them to speak. Resting sounds that float graceful as bubbles. So as bubbles, here we have something called simile. Let me take you back to the word uh, straight as a nun. It's a simile. 
A simile is when you compare uh, two things using as or like. She is beautiful as a flower. So that's a simile. Here, straight as a nun. So she's comparing herself to a nun. She's comparing the way she sits as the way she si the nun sits. Simile. Here, sounds that float graceful as bubbles from their children's mouth. So she's comparing the sounds that are getting out of the mouth, mouth of the uh, ladies to the bubbles from their children's mouth. You know when uh, a kid is like uh, doing bubbles with their mouth? Maybe they're playing or maybe they're trying to learn uh, how to speak. Here, we move to my teacher. My teacher. Here, it's crystal clear that we are in a class. We have a teacher. My teacher bends over me gently, gently, gently squeezes my shoulders. The squeeze I give my sons. Okay, those two lines would tell us about the character of the teacher. The teacher is friendly. The teacher is trying to comfort the lady. The teacher is uh, gentle. Okay, she bends over, she gently squeezes my shoulders. And the squeeze I give my son, so as if the teacher is treating the lady, remember the word women, so they are not l young ladies, so they're women. Uh, the same way she give the squeeze to her sons. And here, hands louder than words. Of course, hands louder than words. She means that by this touch, she felt calm or comforted, and that the teacher, the teacher's personality, is clear to the students. She slides her arms around me, a warm shawl. Here we have a metaphor, a metaphor. She slides her arms around me, a warm shawl. She wanted to say like a warm shawl. So she's comparing, she's comparing the arms of the teacher to a shawl that is around the arms of the lady. One more time, it's a friendly gesture of the teacher. Lifts my left arm onto the cold line paper. One more time, it's a metaphor here. She's, or uh, here, it's an image or a description. She's giving the word cold to the paper. A paper is not cold, right? A paper is not cold. By, but adding the word cold to paper is showing us how She's uh, maybe personifying the paper. She's telling us that the paper is cold. And before she said, foolish in front of the paper. Senora, we can tell that this is the teacher. Don't let it slip away, she says. So the teacher is talking to the, uh, to the lady, to the woman, telling her, don't let it slip away. She means, she means the pencil. Don't let it go away. If you remember, in the beginning, she said that my fingers uh, here in the beginning, she said where mm, my fingers foolish before paper and pen. So and her fingers hide in her palm. So as if it's difficult for her to hold the pen and the teacher is encouraging her and telling her, don't let it slip away. Hold your pencil. She opens the ugly, so wrinkled finger. Oh, my God. This is how she described her hands or her fingers, ugly, soap, wrinkled. So we can tell that this lady is young or old? Old. And she's a mother or she's a grandmother. She's, uh, she used to work in the kitchen, for example. Soap, wrinkled fingers, okay? On my right hand with a pen. Like I pry open the lips of a stubborn grandchild. Also here, this is, is, uh, this is a simile. Okay, here, like I pry open the lips of a stubborn grandchild. She's comparing, she's comparing uh, the way she's opening her hand to hold the pen exactly to, or exactly as if she's trying to open the mouth of a boy to speak. Okay, it's really difficult, right? If a baby or a child doesn't want to speak, it's very difficult to open uh, their lips to speak. Mm. It's uh, exactly as if she's, it's very difficult for her to open her hand, as if her hand is refusing to hold the pen 
or the pencil. Let it breathe, says this woman who knows my hand and tongue not. Okay, not it means, here she's, we can tell that it's very difficult for her to speak and difficult for her to write. So this lady may be learning English, we can tell from that in uh, this or during this poem, this lady was uh, learning English. She's a Spanish lady or a Mexican, sorry, Mexican lady. And she, she's telling us that it's very difficult for her to learn how to speak and how to write. But she guides, the teacher guides. And I dig the tip of my pen into the white. And I was able to hold the pen and dig the pen into the white paper. I carve. You know when you carve, you carve, you press. It's very difficult when you carve, as if it's very difficult, you're carving. Yeah. Yes. I carve my crooked name. And again at night, until my hand and arm I saw. So she tried and tried and tried to write her name. Till her arms or her hands hurt her. I carve my crooked name, my name. So she was able, by the end, to do what? She was able by the end to write her name. So that's a victory for her. Triumph. She won. Okay? And she was, she insisted on trying to, um, to write her name. And she, with the help of the teacher, was able to do that by the end. So one more time. Pat Mora is a poet uh, who's famous uh, of writing poems about the experience of Mexican uh, women uh, who are trying to learn or who are new to uh, communities. Like here with the lady, the speaker in our poem. She's a lady who's trying to learn English. She's trying to read and write. Uh, it was very difficult for her in the beginning, but at the end she was able to do it and she won by writing her name. We can tell that the lady is uh, trying her best to learn. She didn't give up. She insists on learning. Also, the teacher is friendly. She's encouraging and she's guiding uh, the lady. We can tell from the usage and the images uh, that uh, the poem is um, showing how this lady felt during this experience of learning how to read and write. Thank you.